right, we are two minutes away from our official start time. So this will uh, just give a couple of people some time to come on and join us. And uh, we'll get started in a couple of minutes. So maybe I can get ready to read this disclaimer. Keep us all safe. <laughs> so thank you for coming in today, Jen. I yeah, think. I'm really happy to be here. Yeah, I think our viewers are going to love this one today. So, um, hi everyone, my name is Lynn Weems. I'm coming to you from a different kind of better and a different kind of better as a platform for wellness practitioners uh, to give the world an opportunity to learn about different ways of healing. So that's why we're called a different kind of better. So uh, for the next four weeks, we're on a journey to talk to people that have healed themselves through uh, natural therapies. And uh, it hopefully will be a different type of natural therapy every week so that we can all learn from it. But it's really exciting to actually be able to host people that have actually lived it, experienced it, um, come out the other side and are here to tell us how they did it. And we're hoping that through this, um, this next four weeks of uh, webinars that you'll be able to learn and that a lot of people may um, have an opportunity to learn about something that can augment what they're already doing or choose to actually do it the same way that our um, guest speakers have chosen. So, um, so let's get the formalities out of the way. I'm just going to read a short disclaimer just to protect us and our guests. So this presentation webinar may contain general information about various medical conditions and their treatment. It does not provide medical advice. The information provided through this presentation is for informational purposes only. The purpose of this message is to promote and understanding and knowledge of various health topics. It is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment before beginning any type of natural integrative or conventional treatment regimen that is being presented herein. Uh, it is always advisable to seek the advice of a licensed healthcare professional, whoever that may be. So um, the story you're about to hear is really um, exciting. I am so pleased that uh, you decided to put a little message on my wall, Jen, saying that you would be willing to do this. I want to introduce you to uh, Jennifer Houston. Is it okay if we call you Jen or do you prefer Jennifer? I, am, I actually am Jen. So I, I would prefer you call me by my name. Yeah, Jen Houston. Okay, so good. So Jen uh, is the founder of Canadian Women Healing Our World. So that's pretty important. And I am so glad that we have people that are, you know, out there promoting and advocating uh, for health. Her mission and vision is to bring the ideas and energies and insights from people around the world with the objective of creating opportunities for personal growth, healing and the transformation of our planet. Um, planet survival is really important to me. So I'm really glad to hear that. Um, Jen works as an intuitive counselor and she helps clients all around the world. So she's global um, and she helps them heal from emotional uh, or relational trauma. I should say, right? And I'm sure you'll explain that to us more. She spends a lot of her time in her community home, which is in London, Ontario, Canada. Uh, she works with disenfranchised women to transform their lives by providing access to her programs and services at no cost. Bless you. Bless you, bless you, bless you for doing that. She has spoken at numerous events and has a powerful and moving story about how she healed herself from the inside out, uh, which is my vision too. I, it's just so important. So we're going to basically get started and start hearing about what it is that you have to tell us. I know from a little bit about when I spoke with you that you um, have survived quite a few things, um, specifically stage four breast cancer, is that correct? You were stage four. Um, 
that you um, have had uh, tennis elbow, some plantar fasciitis, um, some trauma-induced fibromyalgia. Um, so where do we start? Maybe I'll let you sort of decide how you started your journey, how you chose uh, to do what you did. Um, did you start with Western medicine and then go into a more natural type healing or did you use both of those modalities together? So I'm going to let you start with your story. Okay. Um, so thanks. First of all, thank you so much for um, connecting and uh, it's an honor to be here. Um, you know, if I think about uh, the first thing I want to say is I didn't choose uh uh, the journey I'm on, it, it chose me. So I think that's a really important distinction is uh, um, I really feel like I was called to, um, you know, to rise and to change my own life, to transform my own life so that I can help others to do the same. Um, if I think about my healing journey and where it began, I'd have to go back um, probably 14 years ago, long before I felt physically sick, long before I had pain in my body. And, um, or even, you know, even further back, even to my childhood, you know, to where all of a lot of this trauma and what I call relational trauma, trauma that we, um, we pack away deep inside of us, that is usually from significant relationships in our life might be a parent figure might not could be a significant relationship. And I, you know, had a, a really uh, rough time as a kid. I had a really young teen mom, um, moved a lot, um, didn't have a great nutrition. My mom did the best she could with what she had. Let's just say that. And um, did not have a lot of positive influences in, in her partners um, in my early years. Um, suffered a lot of trauma there and a lot of abuse. And really what, what happened as I grew older is I just didn't take care of myself. I didn't have a love of myself. I forgot to... Um, I forgot to love me, right? And I, because I hadn't really experienced what feeling love was was like and what it really meant to be loved. Um, and I didn't know that I could love myself. I never really thought of it that way. Um, but about 14 years ago, I went through um, a, you know, a traumatic time with a divorce and I set off on a journey. And in this journey of discovery, I made a lot of mistakes. I fell down a lot. I made a lot of bad choices. Um, that all were around, um, you know, this core belief of, you know, not being worthy of not, um, not being enough. And, you know, as time went on, you know, I can go back to about four, about five years ago, I started to notice symptoms in my body. And I'd, I'd reached out to, yes, the medical, um, you know, to traditional Western medicine, and said, you know, my mind isn't right. Like I, I this, is it right that I'm feeling these things? And really their their prescription was exactly that was a pill um and, and and every time it would leave me feeling worse and and i'm not saying that it, it happens to every person this way it's but this is my story right. and um and i just knew that um what i needed didn't come in a pill bottle um i needed um to really heal um the inside of my body um, starting with my spirit, my soul, I needed to deal with the things my mind was telling me about myself. And, and I know now, I didn't know then, that both of those things can create and did create for me a physical manifestation of all of this um, emotional and mental pain that then manifested and became these diseases in my body. Um, you know, you list a couple, yes, I had breast cancer, um, they want to do all sorts of treatments uh, with me um, from that had fibromyalgia, which is a, is a stress response that your body does take. Um, doctors won't tell you that, but I can tell you that I was a highly stressed person. And the more stressed I got, the more I had these symptoms and um, the more my body, that's how it reacted. And again, off to the doctor, more specialists. Um, and so initially I was just looking at Western medicine. And, um, and until I, I, I heard the C word, until I got cancer. And, um, and even then, you know, when you're a cancer patient, first of all, it's traumatic just even hearing that. And then you're just sort of put through the motions. Okay, well, you're going to do this. And, and it's chemo and it's radiation. And here's the pills. And don't do this and do do that. And this is how you're going to feel. And you're going to lose your hair. And, 
you know, it was just so overwhelming. So I did all of what they told me to do. And then um, what I really noticed <laughs> during my treatment, of course, my mental health and my emotional well-being were at their all-time low. Let's just say I was as low as a person can feel about themselves and their self-worth and um, my energy and um, the things I believed about myself. Um, they, they'd never been worse and they'd always been really bad. Um, but this was at a, a time where I really got to a place where I just didn't even want to live anymore. I didn't want to do the treatments anymore. Um, I wasn't leaving my house. My body was in pain everywhere. I was on, I, I think I told you this, Lynn, that I was on about eight different pills, um, all from different specialists, you know, a pill and then this pill to make that pill not make you feel so bad. And, and, um, and what it came to is that I was really mentally unstable and I had more pain in my body than I'd ever been in. The only thing that could have possibly, um, and I was prescribed painkillers as well, um, but they just made me sleep, right? Um, uh, they gave me tramadol. Anyway, doesn't matter what they gave me. Um, and, um, and then I wasn't eating right, right? Like, so just all of this just built up. And, um, you know, when I asked my, my doctor, right, my oncologist, sort of, you know, I, I went and said, you know, I'm having really unwell thoughts, you know, I, I don't want to live. Um, I think it could be the medicine that you're, you're giving me. Um, well, no, we don't think so. It's normal for you to feel that way. You're going through cancer. And um, I saw a psychiatrist as well. And again, I was given a pill called Seroquel. I went on that. And that's when things really went um, when I went haywire, right? So now I'm, you know, my mental health, my emotional health. Um, so I actually um, didn't choose this, but I had a really uh, um, traumatic experience uh, and decided I didn't want to live, right? And um, the, I was saved that night by a friend. That's another story. But um, that night or within that week, I had this dream. And the dream told me I needed to, it was like I was walking away from one life and into another. And, and this is when Canadian Women Healing Our World was born out of this vision and in this dream. And in this dream, I, I, it was that I, was, I had all these people. It was like it's down a hall and all these beautiful people like yourself. And I just was meeting all of these people. And then what has happened since then, Lynn, is all of those things have come true. I have met um, on a journey because it's not one thing I've done. I have, I have met holistic healers that I call them healers. That's my words. Mm -hmm. um, that using all sorts of modalities down my path um, from you know, doing energy work um, to uh, yoga, to meditation, to mirroring, to all sorts of things. And really, I think that's what a lot of people need to do. They need to explore um, the worlds that are out there and find out what works for them. I needed to calm my mind. So meditation um, and uh, really feeding my mind the right, right messages, the right food, the right everything had to be, I had to stabilize my mind first. So that was really where I started. Um, that was kind of my first year. And this is about four or five years ago, I guess we could go back. And then, um, and then really Lynn, I, what persisted was these physical symptoms that I still had as all of these side effects of going through what my body went through, through treatment. And uh, of course, they wanted to keep me on this, another nasty drug called tamoxifen for 10 years or better and other chemo pills. And I just, when I woke up out of that dream that day, I literally said, I'm done. I quit. And instead of in one day, I was quitting life. And in the next day, I was choosing to quit everything that I felt was taking my life away. And, um, and my husband, I had my full support of my family, because I literally cold turkeyed everything. Now, I'm not recommending everyone do that. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying for me, I, it was like as if I, that was the only choice I had. I thought, well, none of this is working. Let's try it without. So that's what I did. And it was about a, it was about a month of literally pure, excuse the language, hell. Um, I felt ill. Um, it was just all coming out of me, lots of toxins. And, 
and you know, I just went on it, the, the sort of second part of my health journey. So the second part of my health journey was, well, why does my body still feel this way? Right. I'm 40 at the time, 46, 47 years old. I should feel more vibrant. I know that I have this disease, um, but there has to be something out there. And um, a friend of mine's daughter ended up uh, talking about something calling healing frequencies, right? And I was like, oh, well, what is that? And so I looked it up and I was like, well, that's interesting because I'd use sound therapy, actual frequencies um, during my healing journey to listen to in my environment and when I was sleeping, um, you know, and, and that was another, that was something that I really felt helped me. I felt more balanced. I felt um, but I still have this pain throughout my body. I, you know, the fibromyalgia kind of stuff. And, um, and then I was introduced to a gentleman who, um, has what's referred to as a Rife machine. And, um, they explained it to me like it's a high frequency. Um, and, you know, if you think about your body being all energy and everything is energy, right. Um, what's his name? Uh, Nikola Tesla, that's it, right? Yeah. Nikola Tesla. Yes. And this is this is old science, right? Like this isn't new, new science, but this is uh, something that has been, I guess, reinvigorated. There's um, a new, it's being used again. Let's just yes. say that. And yes. so I looked into it and um, I thought, okay, well, what do I have to lose? And initially the testing, and this is where the, the largest part of my physical transformation um, because I'd always said, okay, well, I've got my mind and my, you know, my spirit are are feeling well through all the great things and people and teachings and, and hard work. I mean, <laughs> you know, it, it takes dedication and commitment and success only happens if you're committed to doing it. Right. And, and, and remembering not to forget, right. And putting yourself first. So um, I'll say that first, um, but the <laughs> physical part I needed help with and um, I'd given up on, I, I mean, I love my family doctor. She's great for what she's great for, but it was always the prescription pad, always the prescription pad. Oh, well, you're still feeling this. Well, go back to the rheumatologist. Oh, well, go see this. And I just couldn't do it. So anyway, Madison is my friend's daughter's name. She gave me this gentleman's number and I went and he did all this testing that really, it was just like pressure points on my fingers, right? And my feet. And what it came up with was sort of what I should eat, right? And I was like, well, this makes sense. I'm a practical person. Um, these are the foods that are right for my body, right? And I kind of thought about it because um, I've got my family all involved in doing this now. It's like thinking of my, my body like a, a car, an engine, and knowing what my engine needs to make it run smooth, to make it run perfect. And so I found out there's things I shouldn't eat and there's things that I should. So I'm a no grain person, right? And not just gluten, but grains, right? I'm a, um, supposed to, you know, I, I just found out what my diet is and I noticed changes that way. And then once we got me settled into there is when the rife treatment started. So um, when he looked in my, you know, using all these pressure points, this practitioner told me, he said, well, there it is. You can see there's your cancer right there. He showed me um, the levels that it was at using this machine, um, showed me other viruses that were living in my body. I had, um, and you'd probably know, um, I had the Epstein-Barr, I had the T-cell, mm -hmm. um, uh, HPV, um, uh, herpes, uh, one, one of the forms of herpes. I had all these viruses that now in my own research, I know can sit sort of even dormant in your body, but cause all kinds of problems and all kinds of symptoms, right? Nervous system problems. And I'd always had a lot of problems with my nervous system, right? Like numbness in my hands, um, down my leg. I've had a spinal injury. That was one you forgot about. <laughs> um, so I've had a lot of problems with nerve pain and nerve pain's hard to figure out. Mm -hmm. um, but as we started doing these treatments, I was like, well, this is interesting. It kind of reminded me of like the Dr. Ho thing. I was like, yeah. well, I have a Dr. Ho. Is that all it is? But it was so much more than that. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, I did, you know, uh, several months, um, a few months. I actually wasn't several months. It was less than three months. My body really responded well. That's what he said. He's like, wow, like 
you have you you do it and then it's it's you know it's gone so when we went back each time after we sort of dealt with one virus at a time that was in my body the levels that were like way up in the red zone let's call it red zone we're yeah. now down in the green you know happy zone and yeah. um and i i just you know the the first initial thing that i noticed was my energy and that was like right from the very first treatment um uh, or sorry when i finished the first treatment during treatment i was a little more tired actually i slept more mm -hmm. i needed to rest awesome. um but when i had the breaks in between when i found out you know that let's say the t-cell virus was no longer in my body through this high frequency healing um uh i had this renewed sense of vitality like i felt incredible i just i can't even explain it um and a and a fog even in my mind even with the food that it helped this this had just lifted like it was just like the icing on the cake right for me and i can't eat cake or icing anymore <laughs> that's okay um but it was you know and so there's the the you know the condensed i guess 15 minute version of of you know uh, there's a lot more in there but th that really you know um i didn't talk a lot about you know this the spiritual side and and my mind side um mm -hmm. because there's so much out there and again it depends on who you are but i 100 percent all of my um, fibro stuff is gone i don't feel any of it anymore um i don't have the numbness i have a little bit of numbness in one of my fingers but it doesn't hurt like it used to um my both of the types of cancers so i had a um the t cell and the, a carcinoma the levels are dropped to nil like they're gone i'm not on anything from the doctor anymore i don't even take an advil i don't take anything um and um there was a few supplements that i needed to be on to sort of reset my system um uh, you'll think this is funny actually he said uh you know we eat and food is food is is a big part of this too it has to go hand in hand i believe with finding out what's right for you to eat and making sure that you make a commitment to thinking and believing that food is life and uh but um he said he said you know when you've eaten the wrong way your whole life and we do as a north american society um we have you know just a terrible diet overall um, he said your your intestinal tract has sort of a, a mind of its own and it can cause um, anxiety, um, depression when it's sort of bogged down. And this is the funny part. He said, he said, Jen, your your digestive system having its own sort of intelligence is is like a woman. It never forgets and it's going to stay angry for a long time until you make it better. And so through eating better, um, I have I'm happy to say that my mental health that mm -hmm. I struggled with for 45 plus years is great. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not in a great mood every day, but I'm overall in a happy and an up mood than I never was. And, you know, I had all sorts of labels. I was, I was labeled um, bipolar, um, manic depressive. Um, I had all sorts of labels given to me and I look at them that way. Um, and even if that that still does exist it's managed through these treatments that got rid of or eliminated to a, a, a high degree these viruses and diseases that were living in my body so there it is there's my share <laughs> i wow. um yeah it's uh it is quite a journey and it's you know it's from my heart it's the truth and uh i do want to share it with the world i'm so happy you reached out because mm -hmm. um since i've gone for these treatments um and uh, you know i reached out to you to talk to you about what you know about it as well mm -hmm. um i've been reaching out to all sorts of women um and 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 men that uh it's just i i work more with women um but reaching out they've been reaching out to me to ask about where they can go and they want to know more and um and and it is out there right absolutely and uh you know you know you're uh, we're kind of what are they we're kind of connected in a way um kind of like soul sisters because you know i'm where i am today because i fought a critical illness and I'm hoping that one of these weeks I'll actually get to tell that entire story. I should have somebody interview me. 
Um, but I ended up, I, my career choices because of that. And I believe that we all, you know, um, have our journey for a reason, right? Absolutely. Um, and, you know, listening to your story, it's so interesting how we, you know, we all start with Western medicine, nearly, you know, unless we've been exposed to natural therapy as, as a child or something, nor, and I worked in Western medicine. So, you know, I had like 20 years in that area before I st uh, got sick and then moved into natural therapies because Western medicine didn't work for me. However, I do want to say, and I say this every week when I interview somebody, I love Western medicine too, because I, I mean, if you're having a heart attack, if you need surgery, we need our docs, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, some of the time they do, they, they do find things and uh, do their best uh, with what they're know. But we also, there's a huge saying that I love to say, and it's, you don't know what you don't know. Right. Right. And I say this to myself all the time because you know, I have like 25 years now experience in the natural healthcare field, and I've been through many different modalities in that process, right? Looking for that, that one big thing that, uh, you know, seems to work the most for most people. You will never have a modality that will work 100% for everybody. The same as Western medicine, right? Um, there's no difference whatsoever. We're all genetically different and our needs are different. But I also, you know, listening to you when you're saying, I needed to change my diet. I'm grain free. I'm, I'm not just wheat free. I'm grain free. And there's books, you know, the, the wheat belly, for example, is a book that explains a lot on how, you know, wheat can affect your gut, right? And um, if we're not, you know, Tom always says, Dr. Tom always says, you're not what you absorb, right? You're not what, it's not what you eat. You're not what you eat. It's what you are able to absorb, right? And so absorption is really important. So your choices, you know, to go that journey, I think there's a reason why you were drawn to that because, you know, now you do have a story and that story is going to help a lot of people. So it's kind of like the dark and the light, right? If we didn't have any dark, we wouldn't really understand light, right? Um, and I, I, I have that understanding in health that if we don't have a challenge, sometimes we never really understand what it's like to be on that side of the table. You know, working in medicine and sitting on the table and interviewing people and getting their health history for so many years. And just and, and I know what you were saying. It was, you know, a pill, a pill, a pill. You know, I, I saw that for many, many years. And then when I'm ill, all of a sudden, none of those pills worked for me. None of those tests worked. And now you you were lucky and fortunate in that you actually got a, uh, well, not fortunate, but you got a diagnosis, right? Um, with me, I was two years even trying to find, you know, um, what that journey was. So it's interesting to hear. So your journey started, basically, you're saying, you know, it was a two or three year journey. And how many, so you're zero, um, you're cancer free right now. How long have you been cancer free? Um, this, my last treatments were just recently. So this is, uh, you know, I'm going to say in the last, in the last year, one year. Okay. Yeah. Um, of, of the levels now of the levels being non-existent. That's what I, I mean, through the, the high frequency uh, treatments. Um, I, you know, once you've been given that label, the Western, Western, uh, um, and again, I just think they're all labels, right? But Western medicine would say, you know, I'm, I never will be. I don't believe that. And I, I believe my body to have healed itself and to be cancer free. And I've seen it in the tests, right? I've seen it in the blood work. I've seen it like it's, you, you can't deny the science, right? So um, I, I think, you know, um, for me, if I was to put a time frame on it, I would say the last year in total, but for having feeling better, the last probably a little bit more than that about 18 months of starting to feel like, um, like myself again, and not having no symptoms and, um, and being clear, having a clear bill of health. 
and we are vibrational beings, right? Um, you know, if you study like quantum physics or um, energy at all, you have to understand that everything we have in nature vibrates at a certain frequency and an organ vibrates at a certain frequency. And, you know, the studies are now showing this is what we need to vibrate at in order to maintain health. Um, and it's pretty hard to do that when we're constantly being bombarded with environmental toxins, um, toxins in our foods, um, things that change our hormones in our foods, um, you know, and just because they say it's okay, uh, it depends on how much of that particular thing that person puts in their diet on a daily basis, right? Somebody who has a soda once a week or once a month is not going to have the same impact that somebody who's having two or three sodas every day might have, right? Yeah. This, the salt intake. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the body, mind, and soul connection thing, which you um, definitely are highlighting here, is so important. You know, when, when I talked to you, the one thing that impressed me about your story, and I'm going to try and remember what you said here, but I'm just going to take a look at my notes. Um, but you definitely mentioned that you believed that you had trauma induced. Yes. Um, fibro. And mm -hmm. I believe that in my personal experience with working with people with critical diagnosis for years, um, nearly everybody that were facing these challenges um, would always say that they were always high stress workaholics, um, just, uh, you know, emotional traumas in their life. Um, and this led to this chronic dis-ease, right? Um, and I love the fact that you're using a la the word label um, because, you know, people will come to me all the time and they'll, they'll say, well, what do I have? And I'll say, well, I'm not going to give you a label. That's not, right. what, that's not what we're going to work with, mm -hmm. right? So what we need to work with is getting you to have a better quality of life and feel better. And right. Diet, uh, you know, you you learned that certain things are creating inflammation. So if if you're even if you're getting the right vibrational frequencies, but and then you still keep putting, you know, bad things in, eventually you're going to go back. My sister was cancer free for 13 years, right? We worked with uh, a brain lymphoma with her uh, and kept her cancer free for 13 years, and then all of a sudden she got too comfortable and went back to all her old routines. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't, it was less than two years and she fired up her lymphoma. Yeah. Yeah. So, we have to remember that is my, you know, that is my yeah. new mantra. It used to be, um, you know, my affirmation would be, I am worthy. I'm loved and things I needed. And now it's, I remember because I need to remember how important it is to, um, prioritize and food. I, it, it's food. It's food. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm a believer that our emotional and mental well-being, it, it, yes, there's environment, but what we feed ourselves in every way, and it will begin with what's on your fork, um, mm -hmm. is going to affect all those other things. And I am a believer because I've seen the dramatic shift and change in me all over my mental, physical, emotional well-being from, from dietary changes, Right. And trust me, I eat well. I, you know, some people are like, oh my gosh, no grains. Um, I, I do dairy, but not cow. I can't have anything from a cow, but I can have anything from a goat if I really wanted it, right? Or I can have things that aren't, you know, that are non-dairy. Um, I don't find it limiting. Um, some people might, but if there's a choice to be, have lasting happiness, peace and joy, and to yeah. um, make myself a priority and feed myself well, versus um, the other life of misery and uh, being, you know, being uh, as, as unhappy and unwell as I was, it's a pretty mm -hmm. easy choice, right? That's yeah. a no-brainer. Yeah, Jen, um, mm -hmm. I cannot thank you enough for coming and sharing your story. And um, I'm just going to let our viewers know, the ones that are watching now and the ones that will watch in the future, that um, Jen is totally willing to have you reach out to her if you have any further questions or would like some information. 
please feel free to contact her. We will make sure that we post her uh, links and uh, contact information if you want to, Jen, um, beneath this video. So you can tap into that at any time. Uh, if you don't find it, you can always reach out to me and I'll make sure that uh, I put you in touch with Jen. And uh, next Tuesday, we have another survivor coming on. I'm sure you'll be interested to hear her story too. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on Tuesdays live at five with a different kind of better. Please make sure if you are a wellness practitioner or a natural health care practitioner that you check out the different kind of better platform. You know, it's a member based platform. It's $20 per year to be a member of this platform. It gives you an opportunity to be listed in the directory. If you choose to do so, you also have an opportunity to have um, a a gold membership or an expert panel membership, which allows you to teach people um, what it is that your skills and hone in on them and have the visibility and the ability to help more people than you may be helping now. So until next Tuesday at five, thanks for tuning in everybody. And thank you so much again, Jen, for coming. We really appreciate it. You take care, stay healthy. Okay, bye.